Jay, your line is live. Hey, thanks very much. And uh, Neiman, welcome back. Uh, a big fight coming up, obviously, this Saturday. John Fitch has been around the sport for a long, long time. He's fought for titles in multiple promotions. What does a win over him represent to you in your career? I think it's pretty special for me. It's pretty nice because I've been watching him for a long time. And uh, I kind of knew that we were going to fight one time in my career, you know. Because uh, when I started fighting at the other show that I used to fight, he, I think on my first or second fight, he was uh, on the main event of the, the card. So when I was starting to fight, he, he was already at the top. And I was looking up to him and, and saying, hey, I think I can beat this guy, you know. But uh, it took a couple of years for us to meet each other. And uh, I think he couldn't be better. This is the best time to, to meet him. And uh, it's going to be great. I can't wait for this fight. Obviously, in the lead up to this fight, we've got a pandemic going on, a lot of gym closures, a lot of difficulty traveling. How has that impacted your training camp this time out? Actually, it didn't impact. It was, I would say it was actually a better experience this time because I had the gym just for me. I kind of did like the boxing guys do that they have a camp just for them, you know, instead of uh, being on a gym, which 10 other guys are fighting at the same time and you have your coaches taking care of you and other guys. So I had the camp just for myself and uh, everything was focused on me. And uh, I think that was a great experience. And I think I'm in uh, one of the best shapes mentally, physically, and spiritually uh, in my career. And you've been out for just over uh, a year now. Um, with the time away, I mean, did you want to get back in sooner? Was there more of a reason for this layoff? What did you do with the uh, time when you were out? Yeah, uh, I was supposed to fight in December. And a week before the fight, I broke my hand. And that was really bad because I, I really wanted, I was really ready for that fight. So that injury was a little um, trouble. It, it took a little while to heal. And uh, then they scheduled me to fight in June and all this madness started happening. So it didn't happen when I wanted it to happen. I wanted to, to come back earlier, but it is what it is. And uh, I'm, I'm very grateful to be back right now, you know. Well, glad to have you back. Looking forward to this weekend. Thank you. Steve? Am I live? Yep. Even, thank you for the time, and it's always good to talk to you. And I want to know, since it's already been mentioned on the call earlier, that you and John Fitch have a common opponent in Rory McDonald, and he was asked if he could pick up anything on how to fight you from watching that fight. So I would pose the same question back to you. Could you pick up anything from seeing his fight with Rory that you can use when you fight him? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I think from every fight that a fighter has, you can watch the fight and pick up a couple things. So definitely, uh, I can pick up a couple things, especially standing up, you know, and a couple on the floor too, so. Yeah, I don't like watching videos too much on my opponents. Uh, but uh, yes, I had a pretty good game plan to fight him. And we've seen the game plan that you execute work almost flawlessly against everyone, especially when fights go to the ground. So when you think back on that Rory McDonald fight that you had, is there any one thing that you wish you could do that fight over and change it to have it go more your way? Yes, uh, I think it's something that I will do on this fight, which is not allowing uh, the guys to stay on top of me for so long. You know, even though I'm on the bottom, I'm the one attacking more. I'm the one almost finishing the fight, which was the case against the fight against Rory. If you watch the fight, I fought, I fought from the bottom, but I was the one uh, trying to finish the fight. I almost got an arm bar, a, a knee bar, and, 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 and many other attacks. So the judges in MMA, they don't see the guy on the bottom winning. doesn't matter what they do. So I kind of learned that from that fight. And now uh, I'm going to do my best not to allow them to stay on top of me, doing nothing and waiting for the time to pass by. 
And I think that's what John Fitch does best, and that's what he's going to try to do. All right, one more for me, Neiman, and then I'll let you go. If this fight goes your way, which you seem very confident of right now, is it a title shot after this with Douglas Lima? Yes, I think so. I think it's uh, John Fitch is uh, it's ranked pretty well, especially right now in his career. Uh, he's coming from a lot of wins and he's coming from a draw against the, the other champions. So I think, yes, if I beat him on Saturday and if I beat him convincingly, especially, uh, I should get the title shot next. It's always a pleasure, Neiman. We look forward to your fight on Saturday. Thank you. Thank you. Kevin. And even uh, one of the big questions was, you know, in that fight against uh, Rory McDonald, you know, you you said like, you know, you were trying your best in the bottom, trying to uh, finish with submissions. Was it mentally, uh, did it mentally hurt when you, you know, you lost that fight? Like, did you take, uh, did it, was it a setback or did you just move forward from that? Uh, it was a little setback, uh, not because I lost the fight only, but because it was a title fight. So I really wanted that title and uh, I, I wanted to have the title at home in Madison Square Garden in New York. And uh, that hurt because I didn't get the belt, you know. So if I lose any other fight, it wouldn't be as bad as losing a title fight. So, yes, but I got over it pretty quick thanks to my jiu-jitsu days. I competed a lot, I lost a lot, and I win a lot. So... I know how to win and how to lose, and uh, I learned a lot from that fight. How has the one-year layoff uh, affected you? Was has it been a positive effect, or you know, has it been a little bit of a you know slow uh, climb back? I think it was a positive effect. You know, um, I was ready to fight in December. I was in great shape, uh, but I I, I I got injured and uh, I couldn't come back earlier. It was positive because I kept training this whole time. Even when I had the cast on my hand, I kept training with one hand and kicks, you know. So I never stopped training. I love training and uh, I kept training and evolving and getting better. Uh, one last thing is if, you know, Neem, uh, if Douglas Lima goes up to fight Gegard Mazasi for the um, middleweight championship, do you possibly see yourself? I know Beltra hasn't done it, but, you know, uh, fighting for an interim belt in the uh, future? Yes, I don't want an interim belt, you know. So if Bellator puts up an interim belt, I'll, I'll do it. But uh, it's not a, what I want. So, but it is what it is, you know. Carlos? All right, moving on to Trevor. Hey, Neiman. Um, a quick question about um, your evolution of MMA. You know, you're extremely credentialed in grappling. Uh, but back since 2013, what has been the, the biggest learning curve um, in getting into the sport of MMA um, as a fighter? I think it was learning that MMA is different from other martial arts. So... What I mean by that is that MMA is not jiu-jitsu, MMA is not wrestling, MMA is not boxing or any other thing. So if you're really good at jiu-jitsu, that doesn't mean that you got, your jiu-jitsu is going to be good in MMA. If you're really good at wrestling, it doesn't mean that your wrestling will be really good in MMA. So I find that um, MMA is a different sport and, uh, and that's actually really good for me because I've been doing this sport for a long, long time, and now I consider myself an MMA fighter. So I'm ready to take down wrestlers. I'm ready to uh, fight any grappling fight that that could come into me, and uh, I'm I'm ready to to box any boxer actually in MMA. And uh, one, go, just going back on that, what has been like the proudest moment so far um, in your fighting career that you look back on and that you're most proud of? You know, out of all your you know extremely um, impressive record and all these fights what what makes you the proudest um, as a fighter I think was my debut <laughs> you know uh, because it took me 
a will to leave jiu-jitsu behind and look for something different. So I think my debut was uh, something that makes me proud of. And to see where I am today from where I was when I first had my, my first fight, it makes me really happy to, to see that uh, all the hard work that I've been putting, it's, it's working. I already answered my questions. Rick? Yep. Um, Neiman, our, well, my question is, after you win this fight, what else do you want to prove if you get the title shot coming up against part two with Douglas Lima? Um, what is your next, like, like, what is your next, like, motivation to give out to the fans to know that you can win this fight? Um, I want to prove that I am the best welterweight in the world, that I am the best in the world. And uh, I want to prove that I deserve to have that, uh, that world champion uh, in, my, in my record, you know? All right, thank you very much, Neiman.